G'day, I'm Bruce Sample. Quality table perch start with quality, strong, healthy fry or fingerlings. Strong, healthy fry or fingerlings don't just happen. It all starts with the breeders, the fish used to make the eggs that make the larvae that end up as fry or fingerlings. In the early days, only wild fish were used. Now a balance between domestic and wild fish are used. Domestic fish are chosen from commercial farms. Qualities such as colour, shape and of course fast growing is what we look for. But if new wild genes are not used in a balanced way, issues such as deformities will creep into the offspring. The jade perch story is actually a long story. This part of the story is about collecting the wild fish. It's a long way to the Barcoo River from the east coast of Australia. In fact, the Barcoo River is a long way from anywhere. It's a thousand kilometres from the hatchery. We need to take everything we need for our trip and our stay in the bush. And because we're bringing back live fish, we have much more equipment than the average camper. We make regular stops along the way to make sure everything is nice and secure. Most of the trip is on good quality bitumen roads. Because of the mining boom at this time in Australia's history, there are trucks everywhere, just as well they are good roads. We stop the trip to buy some essential requirements. So what have you got there, old boy? I've got two sleeping mats. You like your comforts, you've got two. Yeah, I didn't like those ones that you keep put back in the cupboard with holes in <laughs> So with two double bed air mattresses safely tucked away, it's back onto the road. After driving most of the day, we cross a milestone in our trip. It's downhill now until we get to the Barku River, but before that, we've had enough driving. We spend our last night in a nice comfortable bed. Next day, it's the end of the really good bitumen roads and on to the outback bitumen roads. We're not the first ones to be here, but it is a long time since Major Mitchell explored this area. Finally, we move off to what they call the main bitumen road onto an outback bitumen road. If we're lucky, this will take us quite a lot closer to Too our final shame. destination. Yeah, your body. We're not so lucky. Even the bitumen's rough. Okay. And the rough bitumen gets rougher. Wow, well, that's a skinny strip of bitumen, isn't it? Sure is. But at least it's a bitumen. Not much bitumen left in it though, is there? It's pretty still. But it's not long before even the bitumen gives out. We find ourselves on a bumpy, dusty, dirt road. Right on the edge of Australia's arid and semi-arid region. We're at 280 metres above sea level in this part of Australia. Most of the rain comes here in summer. The wettest month is January, where the average rainfall is 84.8 millimetres. The driest month August, where the average is only 16.3 millimetres for the month. For the whole journey, 
we only came across one creek crossing that had a little bit of water in it. For the kangaroos and emus and other wildlife that live in this region, this little water hole would be their only place to stop and have a drink. It certainly is a dry part of the world at this time of year. The grass is mostly dead and the scrub is very stunted. It's a long time since this ground saw its last drop of rain. Anyway, time to move on. We've got a lot more road to cover before we reach our campsite for the night. It seems like we've been driving for hours and hours. That's probably because we actually have been driving for hours and hours. And pretty soon the journey is broken by something very interesting, an intersection. We haven't seen something this exciting for a long time. And it tells us that we don't have far to go before we reach our final destination on the dirt road to the camping ground on the Barku. Eventually, we reach the entrance to the station which holds the waterhole that will be our home for the next couple of weeks. The road narrows even more. Not too far to go now. Eventually the road, road being a very loosely applied term here, turns into a two-wheeled dirt track. With the sun close to the horizon, this dirt track can be a little hard to follow. And it's really hard to believe that we're so close to such a large body of water. The two-wheel track leads us right to the edge of the Barku River. And with the sun right on the horizon, we don't have much time to waste. We need to get our camp set up, our tent set up and a nice fire built for the evening. As I said earlier, it gets very cold here at night. Once the camp's set up, it's time to turn our attention to our fishing equipment. We get everything ready for the morning. We fill up the transporter tank on the back of our truck. This will be the home for the fish while we're here for the next two weeks, and then it will take the fish all the way back a thousand kilometers to our hatchery. 